It's happening. The signs of the last day's prophecies are happening just as Bible prophecy foretold. And it's revealing that we are nearing the end of this age of grace and the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. Thank you for being a part of this last day's church community on this ministry channel of Signs of the Last Days. We give thanks for all of you who are supporting this Signs of the Last Days ministry with your prayers and your offerings. It is you praying and you giving that supports this ministry to be here and to continue as we are here watching together with you and praying with you. As Signs of the Last Days prophecies reveal, we are near the appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church and it's time to prepare now. There's news where Russia is back in Cuba as a fleet of Russian warships with advanced weapons are in Cuba 90 miles from the coast of the United States. They have been in the Atlantic and will be in the Caribbean doing military drills as they are practicing for war with the West. And them being this close at this point in time to the shores of the United States could be an indicator of a surprise Putin is planning for the West this year near the U.S. political conventions and the presidential election. U.S. officials have downplayed it. But when a fleet of Russian warships show up off your coast and are practicing war drills to fight you, you better pay attention, especially in this, the last days of prophecy, when the barbarians of Gog and Magog are coming out of the far north and flowing out in aggression. The large Russian warship and the nuclear-powered submarine with their support ships that have arrived in Cuba's harbor to a 21-gun salute are carriers of Russian advanced weapons, including Russian Zircon hypersonic missiles, which are ultra-fast and maneuverable, which could land missiles in the U.S. from there in just a matter of not minutes, but seconds. These warships have just been conducting war drills in the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of the United States. And then they skirted along Florida's coast down to Cuba. And they are also planned to participate in Russian war drills in the Caribbean, practicing war on the U.S. between the ports of Cuba and of Venezuela. Russia has brought these warships near the coast of the U.S. at a time of serious tensions between the two countries where the U.S. has continued to step up its support of Ukraine in the war with Russia to where now the U.S. government has supplied Ukraine with weapons and has also given Ukraine the go-ahead to use those weapons to attack inside of Russia, inside Russia's own country. This would be like Russia providing weapons to groups in Mexico and saying that they can use those weapons to fire into the United States. So the tensions are rising now between the U.S. and Russia in a way that they haven't since back in the early 1960s when there was the Cuban Missile Crisis between the U.S. and Russia, which historically is the closest that the two nuclear superpowers ever came to nuclear war. I distinctly remember as a young person then in those days where in our home my parents started talking about putting in a nuclear bomb shelter in order to try and survive any nuclear attack from Russia launched on the U.S., there was such concern because Russia had placed ballistic nuclear missiles in Cuba that could be fired into the United States just in a matter of minutes, with the Russians effectively putting the entire continental U.S. under the nuclear threat of those missiles in Cuba, which was a threat that the U.S. could not tolerate, which this led to a 13-day confrontation between the two nuclear powers as the U.S. blockaded Cuba and brought Russia and the U.S. to the brink of nuclear war. 
and the growing tensions now between the U.S. and Russia could become not that different from what it was back then between these two adversaries in the days of the Cuban Missile Crisis and the blockade of Cuba by the United States. And the U.S. and Russia are headed on a collision course, again, as it stands right now, as there are similar growing concerns now amid the recent revelations that Russia is back again in Cuba. With Russia making a renewed push into Cuba as before, Cuba is desperately in need of gas, food, money, most everything. And Russia is back in Cuba with big promises, offering Cuba great deals and promising Cuba to build up Russia terrorism for them. And of course, along with that is also Russia's plans to revitalize their military intelligence stations and their military naval facilities in Cuba, and also plans to provide landing strips for Russian long-range bombers landing in Cuba as well. With Russia now having the attitude that if the U.S. can invest in Ukraine militarily on the borders of Russia, then Russia can also invest militarily in Cuba near the borders of the United States. And that's what they're planning to do. As Cuba is an outstanding opportunity for the Russians as a great location, not just for tourism, not just for Russian tourism, but also for Russian spy operations and for Russian military operations against the U.S. from there in Cuba to where Russia would be able to have warships and spy ships always lingering just off U.S. territory and could have Russian warplanes regularly flying up and down along the U.S. coastline, where Cuba would be an important aspect of Russia's war plan against the United States. And tensions and conflict with the West by Russia and her allies, like Persia, Iran, this is going to continue. And these tensions and conflict is going to continue to build according to the prophecies of the Holy Bible, until there will be a major prophetic incident. The prophecy of Ezekiel in chapter 38 foretells that the West will have growing conflict with the prince of Rus over Russia in the last days of prophecy, eventually and especially in relationship to Israel. And these tensions between the United States and Russia in recent years have been building strongly and they these tensions are already in play <clears throat> as the U.S. is currently in support of Israel. And the conflict of Israel with its Arab allies around her in the Middle East while at the same time, Russia is supporting Israel's enemies of Hamas, Hezbollah, Syria, Persia, Iran, and others. And Russia has also become Israel's loudest critic, condemning Israel and repeatedly calling for Israel to be dealt with in the United Nations. And now with NATO's 75th anniversary summit coming up soon, from this July 9th to July 11th in the U.S., in Washington, D.C. There are now growing concerns that Putin is planning a surprise, as he would love nothing more than to try and reign on NATO's party. And Putin is especially ticked off now that the U.S. has just okayed Ukraine to use U.S. weapons to attack inside of Russia. And as I mentioned, the United States and Russia are on a headlong hit of their heads, a headlong conflict 
is what they are heading toward. As the United States has just signed a 10-year agreement with Ukraine to provide Ukraine support. So the United States is providing Ukraine weapons, they are providing Ukraine support, and they are giving Ukraine the okay to use United States weapons to attack Russia inside of Russia. And then France <clears throat> is also preparing to deploy French soldiers into Ukraine as trainers. So Putin is thoroughly ticked off right now as the tensions are building between Russia and the West. And Putin has a history around springing surprises near the time of major global events, like the major 75th anniversary of NATO in the United States. An example of how Putin has sprung surprises at the time of major events in the past is like, <clears throat> excuse me, is like how Russia's invasion of the nation of Georgia in 2008 was timed to coincide with the Beijing Summer Olympics. Also, Putin's first invasion of Ukraine in 2014 took place during the Winter Olympics in Sochi, Russia. And his second invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, that followed a meeting between Putin and Chinese leader Xi Jinping ahead of the Beijing Winter Olympics. So some analysts are thinking <clears throat> that we could be in for a summer surprise from Putin near NATO's birthday bash in Washington, which the timing is also near to the U.S. political party's conventions and the upcoming U.S. presidential election. And these warships, this fleet of warships from Russia showing up now near the coastlines of the United States could be an indicator that that surprise is coming. And there is a broad range of possibilities for a surprise or multiple surprises from Putin and the Russians. There could be a more fierce military offensive in Ukraine, or there could be the use of a new weapon by Russia in Ukraine. There could also be some kind of surprise drill or a drill with a surprise weapon in Russia's naval drills not far from the U.S. Or there could be a cyber disruption, a cyber attack to disrupt and distract the U.S. Or Russia could make big news with a surprise a surprise move in some region of the world, say like in the Middle East. And that will happen eventually. For the Ezekiel prophecy foretells that Russia will surprise the world when Russia and its ally of Persia and Iran, along with a few others, will mass troops on the northern border of Israel where they will make a surprise attempt to cross Israel's border, which in chapter 38 and then chapter 39, the prophecy describes that this event will lead to some catastrophic consequences for both Magog Russia and also the West, who thought that they were living in security in their coastlands. As in this prophetic event to come. In that time, the consequences will not be avoided like it was back before with the Cuban Missile Crisis, but it will come to full fruition because the time has come for the fulfillment of prophecy. And now these events and conditions that are happening in the world, they are warning signs pointing toward the nearing fulfillment of last day's prophecies at the end of this age. It's revealing as warning signs of prophecy that it's time to prepare now for the nearing appearance of Lord Jesus Christ for his church. So to be saved from the wrath of vengeance that is to come. 
by obeying the commandment of the Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 3 and verse 3 and John chapter 3 and verse 5, where Jesus said, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God, and that you must be born again of water and spirit, or one cannot enter the kingdom of God according to the preaching of Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus sanctioned only his chosen apostle in Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19, to tell us how to be born again of the water and the spirit. As the Lord Jesus gave his apostle that Jesus chose, he gave him the keys to the kingdom of heaven with the Lord Jesus sanctioning what he would preach. As Jesus said that what he would preach, what he would say would be bound, recorded in heaven which is eternal for the church of the Lord Jesus. And in the Holy Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles preaching, in Acts chapter 2 in Jerusalem, in Acts chapter 10 among the Gentiles, and in Acts chapter 19 to the Gentile nations, the chosen and sanctioned apostles of Jesus preached how to be born again of water and spirit through Jesus Christ as Lord Jesus commanded and his sanctioned apostles preached. The prophetic signs of the last day's prophecies that we're seeing now are indicating it's imperative to prepare now for the appearance of Jesus. There won't be time later. The time is now when the signs are warning us. Whenever events start happening, they will start happening quickly. They will be surprises. There are surprises that are coming. And it's time to prepare now according to what Lord Jesus and his apostles actually preached in the acts of their preaching in the Holy Bible Scriptures. And if you need help finding someone to pray for you and baptize you biblically where you are located, <clears throat> according to the preaching of Jesus and his apostles in the Holy Bible, you can contact us here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry to help you find someone. Our contact information is down at the very bottom of our website. Our website is signsofthelastdays.org. And down at the very bottom of that website in the footer in the smaller print, you'll find our email address there and you can email us with the name of your town, your state, your zip code and say, I'd like to know a location near me to be able to be prayed for and baptized according to the preaching of Lord Jesus and his apostles. And we'll be glad to help you with that. Please be looking for our next Watch and Pray live stream as our Watch and Pray live stream on this Sunday evening where we plan then to share more signs of the last day's prophecies that are happening right now. That Watch and Pray live stream is when we as a last day's church from around the world gather and we watch the signs of the last day's prophecies that are happening and we pray together live over you and your prayer requests. It's where we have a real worship service as a true last day's church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we want you to please join with us. So please make sure you're subscribed to and following this channel. Please click the bell to get all notifications for our live streams and videos. Amazing prophetic signs are happening now in world events and you don't want to miss out on what we will be sharing. And for all the believers of the Lord Jesus, remember, Jesus told us that these signs that are happening in these last days are telling us to keep looking up as they show us that our redemption is drawing near. Signs of the times are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the Upon the Eastern Star